Lord, we give him praise. Can you give him glory and honor? It is due unto our Lord. Amen. We thank God for this day that the Lord has made. We are rejoicing. We are glad in it. Amen. We are grateful. Amen. For a great holy convocation the Lord has blessed us with. Amen. We have been blessed this week. Amen. Every night. Amen. We know the Lord is going to continue to bless us even uh, today. Amen. As we conclude our holy convocation. Amen. Let God be God. Let God be God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. And we're going to we're going to uh, read a scripture. Uh, our theme scripture has theme, theme verse has been Psalm forty six and ten. Uh, but this morning I want to read the whole chapter, uh, Psalms chapter number forty six. Amen. As we prepare to go into our worship on today. Amen. Uh, Psalms forty six says. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore will not we fear, though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof, Selah. There is a river, the streams whereof shall make glad the city of God the holy place of the tabernacle of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her in that right early. The heathen raged. The kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice. The earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Selah. Come, behold the works of the Lord. Uh, the desolation he hath made in the earth. He maketh war to cease to the end of the earth. He breaketh the bow. He cutteth the spear in sunder. He burneth the chariots in the fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. Uh, the God of Jacob is our refuge. Selah. Amen. Come on, let's give God the praise who is with us. He is with us always. Amen. And we don't have to worry about a thing. Amen. Because the Lord is present. And we're going to pray. Amen. And then our praise team is going to come forth and lead us into worship. Amen. Lord, we want to thank you for your blessings. We want to thank you for this great opportunity, oh God, that you've allowed us. Come into your presence, O oh God, to bless and to praise your holy name, God. God, we thank you, O oh God, that you've been with us this week, God, how you have been with us through out holy convocation. Lord, we thank you that you're even with us right now, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that you, your presence, O oh God, has been made manifest. God, we give you glory, Lord. We give you praise and we give you glory, God. Oh, God, without you, we could have done nothing, oh, God. Without you, God, we still can do nothing, oh, God. Help us, oh, God, as we're going forth in this worship, oh, God, that you would bless us and move in the presence of your people, oh, God. Let your, let your manifest glory be made manifest among us in the name of Jesus, oh, God. I pray for your move, God. Help us to feel you, God, in the name of Jesus, God. We believe in you, God. We're trusting you, oh, God, to move in our midst on this morning, oh, God. Somebody still needs something, oh, God. Somebody needs the Holy Ghost. Somebody needs healing in their body. Somebody need a, a word from you, God. And in the name of Jesus, God, we thank you that you're going to do that for us today, God. We thank you, Lord, that you're going to touch somebody, God. We thank you that you're going to speak to us in a fresh way in the name of Jesus, oh, God. We're praying, oh, God, as the praises go forth, oh, God, those who lead us in worship, oh, God, the, uh, all the singers, oh, God, and all that goes forth, God, let it be unto you as a sweet spelling savor in the name of Jesus, oh God. Move, God. Move upon their voices, oh God. Move upon their hearts, oh God. Uh, God, as they minister before you and before the people today, Lord, in the name of Jesus, oh God, we thank you for your move in advance. God, we thank you for what you're going to do, Lord. God, we're praying that you move, oh God, as the preacher come forth, God, that you would speak through, oh God, and speak to him right now, God, in the name of Jesus, oh God. Bless your people, oh God, that we may receive what you would have to say unto us in in the name of Jesus, oh God, we give you glory. God, we give you praise in advance of what you're going to do, Lord. God, we bless you and we thank you and we magnify you, Lord. Oh God, even right now, God, because we know, God, that you're
you're going to move. We know, God, that you're going to bless somebody, Lord. We know, oh, God, those who are even in the sanctuary, those who may uh, view later on, God, we thank you, Lord, that you're touching hearts right now in the name of Jesus. God, we thank you that you're mending hearts right now, God. In the name of Jesus, oh, God, we give you praise and glory in, in, in advance, oh, God, of what you're going to do, Lord. Oh, God, we anticipate your move this morning, God, in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, bless your people. Strengthen right now, God. Oh, God, move by your power right now, God, in the name of, of Jesus Christ, we pray. Let every heart say amen, amen. amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Receive our praise to you now as they come forth, amen, to minister uh, uh, before the Lord, amen, in song, amen, and join in. Praise the Lord. Join in as they go forth uh, in the service today. Amen. How many of God want us to give ourselves unto him? Amen. He is a wonderful God. Amen. And we can just give ourselves over to him. Amen. We will be a blessed, blessed people. Amen. Receive them with a hearty amen and a hand clap as they come forth and bless us in song. We ask that you worship with us on this morning. If you can clear your hearts and minds in the name of Jesus. I give myself away. Oh God. I give myself away. So you can use me. I give myself away. Myself away. Oh God, I give myself away so you, so you can use, can use me. Oh God, I give myself away. My life is in your hands. I give myself away. So you can you me verse one. Here I am. Here I stand. Lord, my life is in your hand. Lord, I long me to see. Lord, 
with us. Say oh, 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 Declaring the word of the Lord, yeah. And these are the days of your servant Moses, righteousness being restored. And these are the days of great trials, of famine and darkness and sword. Still we are the voice in the desert crying, prepare thee the way of the Lord. Behold, we come, riding on a cloud, shining like the sun, and the trumpet call, lift your voice, it's a year of jubilee, not a giant till salvation. Salvation. 
after service next door in the portables for some light refreshments. In um, the month of July, the youth uh, department will be having what we call movie nights. So every Friday um, in July, there will be a movie night for the, for the kids down at the Fellowship Hall. So please bring them to enjoy that. I believe it starts at 7.30. No, from, um, at 5 p.m. if you're able to bring them but at 5 p.m. at the Fellowship Hall. Um, uh, uh, we like as much participation as we can get. Uh, Apostle Baker will be <laughs> speaking here at 80 ECJC for a three-day revival on July 10th through the 12th. Also, um, those men who are planning on going on the men's retreat um, July 19th through the 21st at the Lake House in Santee, South Carolina, um, your total is $90 per person, and that deadline um, is July 1st. So please um, see Deacon Leo um, for, for that. Bishop Silas Myers will be speaking in Mississippi for their convocation on Thursday, August 1st. Please check out the church's bulletin board for future church invitations and events. Please pray for all who are on our prayer list, which is also posted in the back on the bulletin board. Please govern yourselves according to the announcements. We will now take up our offering. Amen. Give him some praises up in here. Praise Amen. the Lord because he has been good. Amen. Good, Amen. good, good. We're going to ask you to stand, praise the Lord, at this time and be directed by the usher. We're so glad to see everyone today, praise God, in a respectful place. Praise the Lord. God is worthy to be worthy. Jesus said, I come to tell you what Jesus said. I come to tell you what Jesus said. He said. Oh. 
I came to tell you. But I came to tell you, oh Jesus. He said, repent of your sins and be baptized. He said, repent of your sins and be baptized. I came to tell you. I came to tell you. I came to tell you. He said, repent of your sins and be baptized. He said, well, I've been to the water and I've been baptized. I've been converted and I feel all right. And if you don't believe that I've been redeemed, then follow me down to the Jordan stream. Oh, I came to tell you. And I came to tell you what Jesus said. I came to tell you what he said, repent of your sins and be baptized. He said, Praise the Lord. Let us look to the Lord once again. Eternal God, we come in your presence, praise God, giving you the honor and the praise. My God. Thanking you for another day, another opportunity, praise God, to bless our soul, Lord. We thank you for the hour, and we thank you for the songs of praises that went forth, and we thank you for your people today as we gather, Lord. Oh, Lord, send a blessing, Lord, in the name of Jesus. We thank you for this 40 second holy convocation, Lord. I praise God, give you the praise and the Thank honor, you. praise God, because I've been truly blessed. Hallelujah. Down through the years, even this week, Lord, we thank you for your grace and your mercy, Lord. We can't make it without you, Lord. So, Father, we pray that you have your way today, Lord. And bless El Burger today, Father, as he brings forth the word, Lord. Use him, Lord. Oh, send your word, Lord. Speak to our heart and our mind, Lord, that we might receive your word for Thanksgiving today. Oh, bless him, Lord. Bless the true Pentecostal family also, Father. We thank you for them today, Father. We thank you for our children today, Lord. Continue to bless them, Lord. Continue to give them strength. Continue to bless them to be obedient, Father, to their parents and loved ones. And we just thank you for this offering today, the tithing. And Father, we ask you to bless it in a special way. Have your way, have your way today, Father. In Christ Jesus' name, we pray. Let us all say amen. amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise amen. The Lord. Once again, we are grateful unto the Lord. Amen. For this time, uh, the Lord has blessed us to come together. Amen. In holy convocation. Amen. We thank God for uh, all of our preachers on this week. Amen. Thank God. Amen. Wonderful. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. All the people of God who have come, amen, to be uh, in the house of the Lord, amen. We know that has been a sacrifice. Uh, we know that uh, when we have a week of service like this, it kind of uh, gets pe uh, people get tired and, and uh, you know, going to work and uh, coming to church, amen. But we thank God for you uh, making the sacrifice to be in the house of the Lord, amen. And we know that you have been blessed. Uh, by, amen, being in the house of the Lord. Amen. I want to thank God for, uh, I'm not going to call names today, but just uh, uh, visitors and, uh, and and just everybody, amen, that's in the house of the Lord. Amen. We give God praise for you. <laughs> praise the Lord. And uh, we just want to thank everybody, amen, who worked so diligently, amen, to make this a success. Uh, those who 
uh, work with the sound, those who work with keeping the building straight, and those who uh, work with uh, feeding us um, this this week, and just everybody man, they're putting the programs together, the singers and the, the musicians and all the workers. Amen. Thank God for uh, every night the, the food and uh, y'all see that refrigerator over there. That's that's um, courtesy of PNB. Amen. Promotionals. Amen. Bought that refrigerator next door. Amen. So we're gonna have to run back and forth to the fellowship hall for for everything and and uh, so we are grateful unto the Lord for blessing us. Amen. This week. Amen. And just everybody. Amen. Your labor has not been in vain. And we pray that the Lord would just bless you and increase you and to give back unto you as you have given into this a holy convocation. Amen. And we are so grateful. Even your sacrificial giving. Amen. We thank God for you uh, who uh, who gave throughout the week. Amen. And just it's been a blessing through uh, the week. Amen. So just give yourselves a hand. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Everything has been so beautiful. Amen. It's almost time for the word of the Lord. Amen. And we have a very uh, capable uh, speaker on this morning. Amen. To close us out. Amen. Praise the Lord. So we want you to be in anticipation. We want you to one more time get behind the preacher. Amen. To make preaching easy. Amen. As the Holy Ghost helps him, let us help him also. Amen. Amen. And let's, uh, let's uh, say amen to the word and amen. Be uh, in agreement with the word on this morning. Amen. God is going to speak to us. Right. Amen. We know it. Amen. And he is the pastor of, amen, True Pentecostal Church, Casey, South Carolina. Yeah. Amen. Uh, 2215 Taylor Road. Amen. In Casey, South Carolina. Amen. We're grateful. Amen. And we know the Lord is going to speak to us on this morning. Amen. And we thank God again for everybody. Thank God for the ministry. Amen. Other pillow. Thank God for Deacon Reed. Thank God for a uh, thank God for Mother Myers, Amen. Uh, uh, thank God for my wife, Amen, Lady uh, Tiffany Myers, and Amen, Lady Ike Berger. Praise the Lord, Amen. Uh, thank God for Sister Brenda in the house of the Lord and all the wonderful people of God. God has blessed us, Amen, to be uh, together today in Jesus' name. So, for the Word of God, Amen. We're going to ask the choir to come forth and give us one, uh, give us a selection. Amen. And immediately after that selection, amen, we uh, we want uh, you to receive, amen, the next speaking voice, amen, Elder Albert Eichelberger, amen. Let us give God praise. Let's, give, let's get on our feet. Come on, let's get on our feet and give God praise for the word that is coming our way. Bless the Lord to speak to us in Jesus' name. Y'all know God is able to do it exceedingly, abundantly, above yeah. all that we could ever ask or think. Yeah. How many y'all know that? Yeah. Does everybody know that? Yeah. Amen. He's able to heal. He's able to deliver and set free. Matter of fact, I just found out that someone has been missing someone that I know closely. But God is able to bring them back. How many y'all believe that? Yeah. No matter what, may come our way. God is able. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Exceedingly. Abundantly above all, all you could ask or think, according to the power that I'm just going to see this real quick. God is able to do just what he said he will do. 
He's Lord of the field, every promise to you. Don't give up on God, cause he won't give up on you. He's able. I just want to open up in worship real quick. Y'all mind worshiping with me real quick? Amen. Say, God is able. God Give the Lord a hand praise. He's able. Is he able for you? Praise the Lord, everybody. Truly, it is great to be in this place. The Lord is good. Worthy to be here. We honor our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ on today. We honor the host pastor here, First Lady. Tiffany Myers, Mother Myers, we thank God. The honor of the Pellet Myers and Sister Brenda, thank God for you. We honor my wife, Sister Sonia Eichelberg, we thank God for her. And we thank you, Jesus. We honor my mother in law, Reverend. Tell the folks from Mount Pleasant Baptist Church. My mother, I love my mother-in-law. Hallelujah. And you ever walk out, I to keep the mother-in-law. Hallelujah. Lord, God has been so good this week. I just appreciate the service so much. Uh, I am so full. Um, that I, I shouldn't have to preach it all. Right? Because we don't heard so much good word this week. Enough to make it to the next convocation. Glory be to God. But I'm here, so if you turn your Bibles to 1 Kings chapter 18 verses 20 and 21. I will read 1 Kings 
chapter 18, verses 20 and 21. A companion scripture being found in the New Testament. Dr. Pelham agreed to read for me. It's Matthew 16, verses 13 through 19. 13 of Matthew 16 through 19. First Kings chapter 18, verse 20, and it reads, So Ahab sent unto all the children of Israel and gathered the prophets together unto Mount Carmel. Verse 21 says this, And Elijah came unto all the people and said, How long halt ye between two opinions? If the Lord be God, follow him. But if Baal be God, then follow him. Listen to this part. And the people answered him, not a word. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Let the pillow be you read. Matthew 16. Say that thou art John the Baptist, son of Elias, and other Jeremiah, one of the prophets. He said unto them, But whom say ye that I am? Simon Peter answered, That thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Bar Jonah. The flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father, which is in heaven. And I say also unto thee, thou, that thou art Peter, and upon this rock, this rock, this rock, will I build my church. Gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Bless the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. I want to use for a subject. When you know, you just know. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Father, in the name of your Son, Jesus the Christ, we love and adore you for who you are and what you've done in our lives. We thank you for life, health, and strength, of our limbs, a sound mind and body. We thank you for moving in the midst of your people this week. We thank you for joy unspeakable, full of glory. We thank you, Lord God, for saving a wretch like us for changing our lives and changing our way. So God, stir up the gift today. Move in the midst of your people. And we will be careful to give you glory, honor, and all of the praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Familiar story in the Old Testament. Elijah facing 850 priests of the false god. 450 of Baal, 400 uh, more okay, that served Ashtoreth, by some commentary says. But he was standing alone, armed with and his relationship with the Almighty God. Hallelujah. And he came to the people that should have been wholeheartedly worshiping and praising God and believing in God. Praise the Lord. But King Ahab had, had, had set up his kingdom with some people that, that would give him the yeses that he needs. Hallelujah. They were afraid to let God be God. Because if they let God be God, they would have to abide by God. You don't always want to abide by God rules. So they don't want to let God be God and let his word stand on its own. But Elijah says this, how long halt ye between two opinions? If you're sitting out here today, you shouldn't be somewhere in between Alpha and Omega. You should know that he's the beginning, oh praise the Lord, and he is the end. 
I know it's complication. I know you're tired, but 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 I need you to talk back with me so, so I can be quick and get on out of here, right? So you know the story, Elijah. Said, so you take a bullock and I'll take a bullock. Dress it and lay it on the altar. Clear the wood out and put it on the altar. And you go first. Cry out to Baal. And if Baal answers, then Baal is God. Hallelujah. But if God answers, then we'll serve God. They, they dressed the bullock, laid it on the altar, and called for Baal all day long. Baal had no answer. Baal had no voice. They cried out, Baal, hear us. Baal consumed this altar and consumed this sacrifice. The prophet said to them, maybe he's asleep. Maybe he's on a journey. Cry a little bit louder. Maybe he can't hear what you're saying. Glory be to God. But there was no answer to come. So as time went along, the prophet said, now I'll dress my bullock. I'll lay him on the altar. But then get me a bucket of and dig us a trench and wet the altar. And put one bucket. Then he said, give me another bucket. Then he said, give me another. Three, three times he wet up the altar. And he said, if God would be God, consume this altar. Do you know the fire came from heaven and consumed the altar to show and to prove that God is God. There is no other God like Jehovah. There's no other God like our God. And we have to know that we have to let God be God. And when we let God be God, God will send exactly what we need. And in the process of time, God sent forth his son to be born of a woman. Hallelujah. Let God be God. I am so thankful that Elijah knew his God. Here it is what we have in the Pentecostal belief of religion is that we believe God operates through us by the work of the Holy Spirit. We believe that God has changed our vile and sick mind and cleaned it up and gave us a mind like his mind. When he says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who in the form of God thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, took on the form of a servant, and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. What kind of love is that? When we let God be God, he takes care of our every need. Oh, praise the Lord. When we let God be God, he teaches us exactly what he needs. Here's what I love about God. He loves us so much that he's given us his word to guide us. Now, if you want to come to my and Sonia's house, we're up there in Lexington. Some people say we're way out there. If you're coming to see us, we'll give you the directions, right? So if, you're going, if you want to go to see God, he's giving you the directions. Am I making sense? So every now and then we give somebody directions and they get lost. Right? If you get lost, call me. Hallelujah. And I'll bring you on in. Some of us are living this life and full of the Holy Ghost, acquainted with God, but we're not exactly on the right road. We're somewhat lost. We didn't want God to be God. We want to make sure, you know, sometimes it's hard for us to ask for directions. But if you get lost, call me. God says, if you get lost along the road of life, give me a call. I'm not but one prayer away. Lord, I feel the help coming down. Jesus. Let God be proven in your life. Prove that he is God. 
Learn to lean and depend on God. Learn to lean into his word. Study to show yourself approved. And by studying to show yourself approved, you'll be a workman rightly dividing the word of God. You'll have it in your heart and in your mind. And you'll remember what David said, Thy word have I hid in my in the heart that I might not sin against thee. Lord, I'm lost along the way. I need you to be God for me today. Sometimes uh, they have some problems in life that you just can't relate to other people. You try. Hallelujah. I've seen so many uh, Instagram posts and other kind of posts talking about how lonesome manhood is. Men are under attack everywhere you go. Men, hallelujah. Because they know if you get a strong man who believes in the word of God, God can use him to change the world. It happened in the book of Acts. He took some unlearned and ignorant men and filled them with the knowledge of his power. And this is what we get to Matthew, the 16th chapter. Matthew 16, 13, the preacher read, when Jesus was coming to the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, who do men say that I, the son of man, am? Just as the prophet in the Old Testament said, how long are you halting between two opinions? God is asking us this. Who do men say that I am? And we can only equate God to our carnal knowledge or our natural knowledge. And some say we got to go back and find somebody that resembles the power that you possess. So some say Jeremiah, some say Zias, or one of the prophets. Glory be to God. So he asked the question that make it personal. He said, who do you say that I am? Apostolic doctrine to Pentecostal. Every visitor in this place, you're going to have to answer that question for yourself. It's not going to be what mama told you. It's not going to be what daddy taught you. God is going to require an answer of you. Who do you say I, the son of man, am? Peter was that spokesman. That spokesman. Thou art the Christ. The son of the living God. And I believe in letting you be God. Because you called us from our fishing boat and said that you would make us fishermen of men. And we didn't quite understand what you was talking about. But now that we've walked with you and we've talked with you and we've seen the miracles that you have performed. We've seen the power that you possess. Even Nicodemus saw the power and said, surely you are sent from God because no man can do the things that you do. Hallelujah. When you know, you just know. Hallelujah. God has healed some folks. And they threatened to put them out of the church. God healed the young man. And they came to his parents and said, who healed him? <laughs> his parents said, he's old enough, you ask him. Lord, y'all remember this story? They said, who healed you? He said, I, I, can't, I got to give you a name. All I know is that I was blind and now I see. I was sick and now I'm healed. I was bound, but now I'm delivered. Glory be to God. All of us sitting here have that same testimony. We were somewhere outside the will of God when God decided he had enough of us walking in the wrong direction. And he sent an obstacle, he sent a trial, he sent a tribulation, or he sent us an epiphany that God is God and there's nobody like Jehovah. And we, we had to know him for ourselves. Glory be to God. Lord have mercy. I don't know where I would be today without the love of God. But I'm so glad. July 28, 1988. Mother Helen Woods, Mother Elaine Eichelberger were down on, that, on their knees beside me saying, if you call on Jesus, he'll answer that prayer. So I called on him because I wanted a change in my life. I called on him because they told me if I called him, he would come and he would sup with me, that he would come inside, that he would send his spirit on the inside. 
And it would change the way I walk and change the way I talk, change the way I live and change the way I give. So I called on him. He called all Wednesday night. Left there without it. He said, you did so well. Why don't you come back Thursday night? We came back Thursday night calling on the name of Jesus, tired of the life that I was living, wanting to be delivered. And I wanted to know him for myself. I wanted to have my own testimony about the love of God. I wanted my own testimony about the power of God. I wanted my own testimony about relationship with God, that I can talk to him and he talks back to me. You mean to tell me the God that created the universe, the sovereign God who can do what he wants to do, is willing to talk with me? Hurry be to God. When we let God be God and we know him for ourselves. I heard a deacon say this morning, you got to know God for yourself. Hallelujah. And I know him. Now I know him. These disciples said, some say you're John the Baptist, some say Elias, and others say Jeremiah, one of the prophets. But he says, who do you say that I am? And Simon Peter said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus gave witness to his answer and said, Blessed art thou, Simon, by Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this unto thee. This is a spiritual thing. I tried to explain it to Nicodemus, but Nicodemus tried to take it back to his mother's womb. Except a man be born of water and of spirit, he shall not enter the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said, how can a man enter again into his mother's womb? Jesus said, you're supposed to know God. You're supposed to be a leader, and you don't know spiritual things. Hallelujah. But Peter understood this. Peter said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. Jesus answered him, said, blessed art thou, Simon, by Jonah, flesh and blood has not revealed this unto thee, but my Father, which is in heaven. Now you know it. You just know it. You, you know for yourself that God is real, that God answers prayer. So Jesus says this, upon this rock, upon the knowledge of who I am, upon the revelation from God, and upon you, born Simon the stone, <laughs> glory be to God, I'll build my church. And my church is going to be so strong, and they're going to have so much knowledge of my power, so much knowledge of my will that all the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Glory be to God. And what will you do with this power? I'll give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven and whatsoever things that you bind on the earth. Hallelujah. Am I reading this right? God is going to give us the power to bind the enemy here on the earth to know that we can break beyond the bonds of wickedness. If you're struggling with anything today, you have the power to bind and you have the power to loose. God has gone so far as to give you the power of life and death into your tongues. So I admonish you today to speak life to yourself. Speak life to your children. Speak life to your grandchildren. Speak life to your neighbor. Speak life to your coworker, Because the world needs your testimony. The world needs to know that somebody is willing to live holy. Somebody is willing to let God be God. Somebody is willing to know him for themselves. I'm so glad I know him that he uses me. Hallelujah. To preach his word with authority and with power. Jesus would preach and teach the people. And they said, this man taught as one having authority and not as a scribe. That's because he was God, manifest in the flesh. Hallelujah. Timothy said, he wrote it down. Paul said, use these words. Great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh. I mean, God was here. 
You got to know. Don't be hot between two opinions. You got to know for yourself. And when you know, you'll know. God was here. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, preached unto the gender, believed on in the world, and received back up into glory. Great is the mystery. You don't understand it all. Hallelujah. We see through a glass darkly. Now, we don't understand it all, but one day, it's going to be revealed. He used to sing a song, when I see Jesus. Woo, hallelujah. When I see Jesus. Amen. When I see Jesus. When my feet cross over the threshold into heaven. When I see Jesus. It's going to be all right. But if you know, you just know. Now man has a problem with obeying God. Always has. Glory be to God. Listen to what he said in Romans. Romans chapter 1, verse 20. If you'll read that, if you can get it that far. I got it. Thank you, Jesus. Romans chapter 1. I need y'all to know that you know God. And you reverence God. And he'll speak to you. He'll sup with you. He'll teach you. He'll take care of you. Romans chapter 1, verse 20. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Yes. So that they are without excuse. When you know, you know. You are without excuse. There is no excuse. God decided to reveal himself to us. He who was deity became human. A kinsman of ours with the right to redeem. With a greater love. The Bible says this way. No greater love than a man who would lay down his life for a friend. Verse 21. 21. Because that, when they knew God. What? When they knew God. <laughs> Hallelujah. They glorified him not as God. They knew him. They knew he was God. Uh huh. Even were thankful. Glory. But became vain in their imagination. And their foolish heart was darkened. Because that when they knew God, they had relations with God. He became their provider, their protection. This, the, the psalm that we use this week, Psalm 46, verse 1, I love it. It keeps me. God is my refuge. He's my hiding place. He's my safe place. He's, he operates in a place where I can come into his safety. God is my refuge and my strength. My very present help in trouble. What more can you ask for? But when they knew God, they glorified him not as God. Neither were they think they didn't thank him. If we're going to let God be God, if we're going to know God, be thankful. Be grateful. You don't know. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Be grateful. He could have left you in your sins. He could have cut you off before you got saved. But you are here. Saved and redeemed. Washed in the blood of the Lamb. It says when they knew God, they glorified him not as God. Neither were they thankful. Hallelujah. I bet they were complaining. I bet they said they don't want to be saved that way. It don't take all that. Y'all heard them kind of things before? It, it, we don't take all of that. They knew God. Some of them were ever learning, but never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. So we can go to church. We go through the motions. We do, the, we do all of the things that we're supposed to do, but we didn't have relationship. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus.
It feels like it's hard to preach this. But you got to know for yourself. Because I, I tell True Pentecost all the time, I'm going to tell it. Samson, I'm going to tell it. I told them they needed to be baptized. They needed the Holy Spirit to make it into the kingdom. I'm going to tell them when it wasn't on time. <laughs> I'm telling you how much you can trust this one and that one. I'm going to tell them what I told them is what your word says. And they got to know you for themselves. Glory be to God. But when they knew him, they glorified him not as God, neither were they thankful. What happens when you're unthankful? They became vain in their imaginations and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. They changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like corruptible man and to birds, four-footed beasts, creeping things. Wherefore, God gave them up to uncleanliness, to the lust of their own hearts, to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. Hallelujah. You better know God. Get to know God. Don't you leave this convocation Without the knowledge that when you close your eyes, you're going to heaven to be with the Lord. You can't be halt between two opinions. Glory be to God. There's two words God gave me, hallelujah, in this convocation to look forward to. Alpha and Omega. He told me to tell y'all, some of you are in the beginning. You're at Alpha. You're beginning a new job. You begin getting a new house. You're getting a new car. You're alpha. Your alpha is about to take place. Hallelujah. And some of you over here in Omega is coming to an end. You're about to retire. You're about to back out of a relationship because God says it's not for you. You're about to move away from something. God told me to tell you there's an alpha on this side and Omega's on this side. Glory be to God. And what I, where, where, where I'm standing from here, I see alphas and omegas, so I'm in the middle. So somebody caught in the middle, don't know which way to go. This message is for you. You better know God for yourself. Stop halting between two opinions. Stop putting something else as God. We have a habit of making a car God. We have a habit of making a boat God. We have a habit of making our home God. I can't do nothing. I got to go stay home and clean up this house. We, we, gotta, we make things, God. Things take up our time. Some of us are card players. We got to have that card night every Friday night. Some of us, uh, hallelujah, we go bowling. Some of us, we do everything we want to do. And then when it's time to go to the house of God, you know what they say to me, Ella Pellum, and I know you know this. There's just a lot going on. And I'm sitting here between Alpha and Omega seeing a lot going on. If you looked up a lot going on in the Bible, in the, in the, in the dictionary, picture of me be there. I got a lot going on. But I got to come to the house of God because I know him. I know him. He loves for me to praise him. Oh, how he loves me. Oh, he loves me so. <laughs> He loves for me to sing praises unto his name. He loves for me to come to the house of God and set the atmosphere and say, you are Alpha and Omega. We worship you, our Lord. You are worthy to be praised. We give you all of the glory because you are worthy. If the angels can bow and say you're worthy before the throne, why can't I, the one he redeemed, the one he he caught from going to hell and snatched me back from hell and filled me with his spirit and cleaned up my mind and cleaned up my heart and used me in his church. I owe him a praise. I owe him a thank you. I owe him a hallelujah. He's been too good. And I know him. Hurry be to God. 
Listen to this. Because they didn't want God to be God, verse 24, Romans says, Wherefore God gave them up to uncleanliness through the lust of them own, their own hearts to dishonor their own body between themselves. Verse 25 says, Who changed the truth of God into a lie and worship and serve the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever. For this cause he gave them up to vile affection. If you know you're clean, if you know you're changed, you ain't got to go back. Do not turn back. You're on the right track. You do not go back. God gave them up. The women did change their natural use into that which is against nature. If you refuse to let God be God, these people are going to tell you there's more than two genders. That's why they don't want God to be God, so they can change the truth into a lie. Hallelujah. They'll tell you that you can trans from one gender to another. When I was younger, they said this is transvestite, so I guess they wanted to put it, they want to drop a gender in there when they got in that bowl and said, let's make it a transgender. So he hopped between two opinions. You're talking about somebody hopped between two opinions. He caught between two opinions. He caught between two genders. If you don't, if you don't be careful, you'll marry Johnny and find out two months later you married Jenny. My God. You got to know him for yourself. Let's let God be God. Hallelujah. If we let God be God, we'll know we're on the right track. I need to know that I got it right. I need to know that God is pleased with my life. For, for this cause, God gave them up to vile affections, for even the woman did change the natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise, also the men leaving the natural use of a woman burned in their lust one toward another. Men with men working that which is unseemly and receiving in themselves that recompense of the error which was meet. And the last verse here says, and even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, they didn't want anything to do with God. You know how the demons just eat up a mind like that? I'm so fearful for our children that what they're watching now that they make out of cartoon characters. What's that? Uh, anime stuff that they, they, they put before. And, and from our culture, we just think, well, that's just uh, a cartoon. The devil and got in the cartoon world now. <laughs> He's working up to a young age. <laughs> But even they did not like to retain him in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind. So what does a reprobate mind do? To do those things which are not convenient. And we often say that we do things wrong and say that they are right. And we believe them to be right so much God gave them over. Hallelujah. Romans 3, 3 says this, What do some did not believe? Shall the unbelief make the faith of God without effect? God forbid. Let God be what? Let God be true. And every man. Oh, y'all know that scripture? God bless you. Let God be true and every man alive. We're, we're, we're sitting here. Pastor talked about the exodus from the church. But there's also something else happening. There's young people that are flocking to church. They don't dress like we look at church folk. I'm telling you, they got piercings. They got tattoos. They look strange. And they're, they're still grasping for something. Whether it's truth or whether they're bewitched by a false prophet. So we have the truth. 
And it's incumbent upon us to present truth, teach truth, preach truth, and call out a lie when you see it. Hallelujah. Go to the school boards and tell them, call out lies when you see them. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We got to be um, in a place where we know that we're representing the, the, the kingdom of God. And our children understand how to represent the kingdom of God. It ain't much longer now. Let's close this out. Acts 17th chapter, verse 22. Here's one, one, one passage that I love because Paul is teaching and preaching about Jesus Christ. And he comes across this altar. And this altar says to the unknown God. Now who in the world would have a deity that they cannot explain, they cannot call his name, and they do not know how he works. <laughs> but we have an altar built to an unknown God. Have you ever heard of such? No. Then Paul stood in the midst of Mars Hill and said, ye men of Athens, I perceive in all things that you are what? Too superstitious. Oh, my God. We got so much on our minds. We got so much knowledge and technology that we become fools. We got a smartphone to make us dumb humans. Because we put all the information in him and we forget. I can't even call my children by number. I have to punch their button. That's a smart thing. That's right. This phone is smart. Now, don't make me dumb. God, help us. <laughs> I got to ask him for everything. What's the passcode? What's the password? And Siri. Lord, hallelujah. I like the Siri. Lord Jesus. Listen, for as I passed by, I beheld your devotions. You had devotion to an unknown God? I found an altar with this inscription to the unknown God, whom... Therefore, you ignorantly worship him, I declare to you. Oh, God that made the world and all the things therein, seeing that he is the Lord of heaven and earth, dwelleth not in temples made with hand. Neither is he worshipped with men's hand, as though he needed anything, seeing he giveth to life, he giveth to all life and breath and all things. And have made of one blood all nations of men. Look how God works this out. And the men for to dwell on the face of the earth. And has determined the times before appointed. And the bounds of the habitation. Verse 27. Y'all see this. Y'all got it? Acts 17, 27. That they should what? Seek the Lord. If happily they might feel after him. And find him. Though where is he? Though he be not far from any one of us. Glory oh, be to God. I want y'all to know today. God was here. And he did a work of redemption. Went back and sent another comforter. And you have got to know. That you are prepared to meet God in peace. And when you know, you know. Because Paul said, I knew. He, he, he said to this unknown God, you ignorantly worship. I need to introduce you to the one who created the world and made all, all one blood. That means if you're white or if you're black, you're one blood. We all come from the same blood. We shouldn't look down on one another. We shouldn't hate on one another. We, all we should do is love one another. There's only one race the human race. And what y'all racing for? What you're racing to get to? Glory be to God. In the beginning was the word. The word was God and the word was God. I need you to understand he was here. Hallelujah. I believe he was here. I believe it. I know it. I know he's still here. I seen him working this week. I seen him working today. I seen him making a way. Hallelujah. Would you all stand? Stand to your feet. Hallelujah.
I know him. I know my Redeemer lives. Do you know him? Because when you know, you just know. Hallelujah. Is there any alphas that want something new? Got something new. Beginning to do something new. Is there any in Omega? About to be released. About to live. About to be given their freedom. About to retire. Or is there any stuck in the middle? And don't know which way to go. This prayer is for you. Father, in the name of Jesus. You deserve our praise. You deserve our worship. What you've done this week will encourage us the rest of our lives. You put a word in us to let you be God. And because you're a loving God, you're going to guide us in. If we get lost on the way, we'll stop on our knees and give you a call. And allow you to readjust the directions that was given. We want to be made whole. God, there's somebody in the building today that has been praying for a healing. And the healer is here. We know that you're here because you're omnipresent. You're omnipotent. Hallelujah. You have all power in your hand. And we release today every cancer and every disease. We release it into your hands. You work it out. And we'll just walk by faith and not by sight. Do it for your glory. Do it for your honor. And do it and we will praise. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Noah. When you know, you just know. How many thank God that you know that your Redeemer lives? Amen. Come on, I know. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. And we thank God. Amen. You know, sometimes you can't define a word. But you know what it means, amen. I, I can't, I can't, I can't define it for you, but I know what it is, amen, amen. We know who our God is. I say we know who our God is, amen. Let's give God praise for the word of the Lord. Hallelujah, amen. We give God praise, amen. We thank God that we have come to know Him, amen, in a special and great way. If there is Anybody, amen, who don't know the Lord, amen, you uh, you can reach out to us, amen, and our number should be on the screen for you if you're viewing us, amen, but uh, if you want to know more, amen, about the Lord, amen, God, we reveal himself unto you, amen, God, it will speak to your heart, amen, and God will use others also, amen, to speak to you, amen, because it is a good time to know him, amen, we need to know the Lord, amen, of all the confusing things in the world. Amen. We need to know the Lord. Amen. And if I know the Lord, amen, I can get through all the other stuff. Amen. I can get through all of that. Amen. But God has blessed us. Amen. Let us stand. We give God praise for the whole convocation. Amen. Let's just bless the Lord for this convocation. Hallelujah. Thank you for touching us this week and blessing us. Thank you for moving in our midst on this week, Lord. Thank you for your word today, Lord. Help us to know you more and help us to know you better in the name of Jesus. God, I pray now that you bless us, even God, as we prepare uh, to leave this place, oh God. Let your angels be encamped about us, God, until we're able to come together again, oh God. Be with us, protect us, and watch over us in the name of Jesus Christ, God. We're going to give you praises, the glory. And the honor is in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Let every heart say amen. Amen, amen. amen.